don't drink while you're sitting down. It's a bad idea. About a year ago, I made a video suggesting that people learn to code if they want to get into cybersecurity. I'm back again, but with a twist in my opinion. I'm here to tell you that you definitely need to learn to code if you want to be a hack at least, and maybe if you do some blue team stuff. Is this man gonna answer, bro? Yo. Yo, what's good, bro? I'm recording. Anyways, the question yeah. was, um, well, I'm working on a video for coding and cybersecurity. So I wanted to know if you use code in any of the work you do, considering you're like cloud engineering detection, blue team stuff. Um, I would say, well, yes, I do. And like in various ways, I'd say. So if we're referring to like, you know, coding in terms of like scripting, like Python, I'd say I do that, but like, not as much so like maybe like once every two three months but um in terms of like actually building detections i build the detection that i build out as code so basically i use code to build out the detections every single day so what yeah. language is that it's declarative so it's json um not like you know python but you can definitely do it with python as well with some other platforms okay so if someone asks you asks you should should i learn to code would you say yes or no just yes or no? Yes, absolutely. No questions. Yes. I, that, that, that's a good answer. Good answer, my boy. Uh, that's <laughs> it for this part of the video. Bet, bet. Appreciate it. Wagwan YouTube, welcome to the channel. My name is Tadi. I recently got demonetized on YouTube for whatever reason. So if you'd like to support the channel, link to the Patreon will be in the description. There are a couple of perks on there, like behind the scenes stuff. So do check it out if you're interested. Anyways, let's not waste much of your time. Let me tell you why you need to learn to code. Programming skills aren't only essential to those that work in application security, but to those that do penetration testing as well. While you're doing your internal test, you might not be allowed to install the usual set of scanning tools, enumeration tools, and all that fun stuff. But guess what comes pre-installed on the majority of operating systems? Python. At that point, you might realize that you need to write scripts to complete your testing or make any sort of progress at all. And trust me, that is not an extreme example. If you work in application security, or at least want to work in application security, best believe you will be getting white box penetration tests here and there, if not all the time. But this really just depends on your skill set and your interest, really. But some engineering teams swear by white box penetration tests, saying they are the most effective, and then some will give you the code to look at only if you need it and you test from a black box or gray box perspective. The second reason I'd like to give is that advanced exploitation usually comes from a deeper understanding of the underlying technologies involved. Coding or programming doesn't only involve typing code in an IDE or a terminal, you're going to have to get used to reading and using documentation, understanding the stages of uh, the software development lifecycle and all that fun stuff, right? I'm not saying completely pivot and start learning to be a developer or a software engineer, but a deeper understanding of all this results in most, if not all the cool exploits and CVEs that you see all the time on Twitter and LinkedIn that get $20,000 bug bounties. Oh. I've mostly noticed this from the OSWE, which I'm still currently studying for. It's difficult, do not judge me. That stuff is miles ahead of the basic reflected XSS, I always say that wrong, X or SQL injection that you can't really escalate when doing something like the OSCP or CTFs in general. Now, you might be asking yourself, what languages should you learn? Should I learn? Whatever. For scripting and tool building, I think Python is still number one. And when you want to start building more intricate tools, you can look at low level languages like C, Sharp, or just C and Rust. But if you really want to use C, do you? I don't know if anyone still actually uses C. I've heard that people do. You can also use JavaScript and maybe PHP for scripting, though I still haven't seen anyone that actually uses PHP for scripting. Do keep in mind that no application is going to be an exact replica of another, so learning the basics of programming such as iterations, variables, recursion, 
Threading ETC will help you in exploiting an application that is written in a language you don't necessarily know. I might have lied. Recursion and threading might not be basics. But anyways, how to learn, how to learn, how to learn. Always start with the free stuff. Don't get caught up with the gurus that tell you by my course, you learn whatever you need to learn in six weeks and you'll start making six figures. Always start with the free stuff. If you want to learn Python, I usually recommend Python for everyone or is it Python for everybody? Not sure, but I'll leave a link in the description. It isn't necessarily oriented towards security, but you learn a lot of concepts that still translate to security stuff. If you want stuff oriented, to security you could use courses or books that just depends on your learning style i'm not sure if there's any free resources specifically for security though i'll check and i'll leave links in the description anyway for courses there's tcm security courses on python and they just released a new one for rust links will be in the description below support your boy there's also a c2 course by the mayor which he recently reached Hey yo, there's also a C2 course by the mayor which she recently released. I haven't taken a look at the course yet, but I'm pretty sure you get good value for your money. And uh, I think that is it for me. Learn to code and you'll become a better hacker over time. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.